Hello everyone, my name is Asa True. how are you and welcome to another Star Wars Battlefront 2 video of mine and in this video I'll be sharing with you how I play Battlefront 2. From my in-game settings to general PC gaming equipment and other stuff, I've had a lot of comments over the past few months questioning why I play on a certain FOV and more. Plus, some people have just genuinely been curious as to what settings I use when playing this game or have just got into PC gaming and would like some advice to see what I use. I just want to get off my chest that what settings are used is what I feel most comfortable using. I play the game to have a good and fun time. It just so happens I record gameplay of me playing as well. I know some people really don't like watching my gameplay because of a certain setting, but I'm not going to be changing my settings and feel uncomfortable playing this game. Sorry. So let's just get straight into it with my in-game settings, starting with video settings. Brightness is set to 55. I sit in a well-lit room, so I keep it at that. As for resolution and frame rate, I play at 1440p and 144 FPS because my Asus monitor, which is really, really good, has a refresh rate of 144 Hz up to 165 Hz with a one millisecond response time. The graphics card I use to power this is the NVIDIA GTX 1080 Founders Edition. I don't use dynamic resolution, DirectX 12 or VSync. This monitor is a G-Sync monitor, so I don't need to. Now let's get into the controversial setting, which is field of view. People comment each day on my videos saying my FOV of 80 or 90 makes them feel ill or they just hate it for no actual good reason. Well, when I use a low FOV when playing on console or just in general when the default is enabled, I feel quite claustrophobic using it. It's not good. You don't get to see a lot of your character. Things feel too close to the screen. I'm at a disadvantage because if you have a high FOV, you get more spatial awareness. It just makes me much happier playing with 80 or 90 or more higher FOV. I also want to make use of the screen space and see as much as I possibly can. This setting is not available on console for Battlefront 2, but most console players don't know how much better a higher FOV is. The console FOV is locked to around 70, I think. I could be wrong, but most PC gamers on any game, to be honest, use around 90 going up to 110. For example, if I'm playing any other shooter, I play at the maximum usually of 110. That goes for Titanfall 2, Battlefield, literally any other game. And in Minecraft, you can go all the way up to, I think, 140, which is the bare minimum I use. I hope you console players get to experience a higher FOV for Battlefront 2 in the future. Higher FOV comes at the cost of performance, so you will drop frames. And despite Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, Timefall 2 doing it, Battlefront is still not the same game, even if it is on the Frostbite engine. It would need a lot of testing, it takes a lot of time to do this. Now on to filmic settings. Motion blur is something I turn down to zero in every single game, I just do. You also gain a few extra frames in performance when it is set low. But the worst settings, the worst settings in this game are these next three settings. Lens distortion, film grain and filmic effects. Get them off if you haven't already. It makes the game just look ugly. I've had them off since the beta. In the alpha you couldn't turn them off and I was so annoyed. I was like just... Give me a toggle. Same thing happened with Titanfall 2 before launch as well. I remember playing the alpha at DICE and oh, it just made me so unhappy with these effects. My resolution scale is set to 100, but when taking screenshots or for certain gameplay, I will bump it up to 125. Another percentage slider is HUD scale. I actually have mine down to 20 or 25 because I don't really need the UI covering up more parts of the scene. It's more of an impairment and distraction than anything, so that's why I've got it down quite a bit. My eyes can still see the entirety of the screen, which is fine. Now for the final part of video settings, these are the main game graphical options, and I have it set to high on everything, so it's not custom or anything like that, it's just set to high. It's just my personal preference. The reason being ultra, I could do ultra, but the performance loss isn't really worth the improvement in visual quality. You don't really gain 
a whole lot in terms of visual fidelity if you do go from high to ultra. However, it is much like resolution scale. I will turn it up to ultra for certain footage and if I need to take screenshots. Next up, I'm going to be sharing with you my in-game playing settings and hood from the crosshair color to sensitivity, DPI and key bindings. I'll start with the crosshair color and ever since the beta, I've used green. I tested all of the colors before launch and green stands out the most on the majority of the maps, whereas the other colors tend to blend in a lot more. Compared to white, the default color, it's a massive night and day difference, and it's definitely one I'd recommend tweaking if you haven't already. Another hood option that I have turned off and people don't like this because I've seen it in my streams is the kill log. Personally, I have no use for it, so I've had it off since the alpha. All of these settings, like the chat log being on pop-up, have honestly been the same since I got the game. There's no reason to change it, it's just personal preference from this point. And as for key bindings, I have most of them in a default state, except for a few. I have the chat on the enter key so I can quickly type. I also have a few others changed, but I really can't think what the defaults are, so I don't know what exactly I've changed. A lot of the key bindings I've had the same since Battlefront 2015, I just brought them over, so I felt a lot more comfortable. Plus the control scheme, well the default control scheme for Battlefront 2 is much better than Battlefront 2015. But I do have combat roll set to the first side mouse button and toggle crouch on the other. I also have shift as my toggle to sprint key and not hold as you do a lot of running in this game and it would hurt my finger if I just kept holding it more. If you are interested, I use the Razer Black Widow Chroma Stealth Keyboard. I've had this for about four years now, and I've never wanted to switch it out. I find it super comfortable to use for everything, essentially, and it's never caused an issue. Moving on to a critical part of gaming, and that is sensitivity. My sensitivity in most shooters is low, generally. It's at 22% right now in Battlefront 2. That's the sweet spot for me. I've had it like that probably for over a year now. I think going a little bit lower is quite limiting, but a little bit too high. It can make or break if I miss targets or whatnot. I do have different values for other aiming sections, like aiming that's at 45%. I find that to be fine. On the Xbox with a controller, my sensitivity will be higher because of the limited range of a thumbstick, and I do use a Scuf Infinity controller for that. As for Starfighter settings, these are largely unchanged, purely because I've never really messed with them. I used to just play Starfighter Assault with a controller, and now I just sometimes can't be bothered to plug in the controller, so I just use a mouse and keyboard, and it's no real problem for me. Although I do have missiles on toggle, and the mouse I use is pretty much a cheap one, but it is by far the most ergonomic mouse I've ever held. So the grip on the sides is just so good. For the right side fingers, it's got two little slots and it just fits so well. I've probably used this for about two years now and I went through a bunch of different mice and none of them were comfy compared to this one. And this is the Mionix Neos 3200 and my DPI is 1600 when playing games. My mouse mats, which complements this mouse is a super large Logitech one. I love it because it gives me so much space to do whatever I want with a mouse. I don't have to worry about running out of space with it. Oh, and here's a fun fact. I'm actually left-handed, but I use a mouse with my right hand because when I was four or five learning how to use computers at school, no one thought to tell me you can use your mouse with your other hand. So it's too late to change now. And another key thing in games is audio. And sadly, I've got to have music turned off. I've had it turned off since the beta of the game to avoid copyright claims on my videos. So I've barely experienced the amazing music. Also, my master volume is set to 35. Whilst this game is not really one you can listen specifically just to the audio to work out location of enemies due to how much things go off and stuff like that, it is possible at times, especially with good headset and settings, to definitely find out what enemies are coming for you and get a sense of direction to an extent. Because if you know the different sounds, which is a key thing, you will get this. Droid legs sound different to clone legs, so you can hear the robotic clanking clankers, they got a clank, and it's different materials for each different surface. So on Kashyyyk, for example, you know someone is walking on wood. You can feel and hear the wood 
as opposed to metal in a capital supremacy cruiser. I use the HyperX Cloud 2 headset, in case you're wondering, it is an industry standard one. It's one of the best quality sounding headsets on the market and it's fairly cheap compared to many other competitors. It's like £70, $70. It's really cheap in comparison to ones that you see for 100 150 200 so that's all of my custom settings and how I play Battlefront 2. I really hope you learned something new in this video and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could show your support and drop a like on this video. Comment below which thing you found to be most interesting or most surprising. What did you learn? Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this and turn notifications on so you don't miss another Battlefront 2 video. Check out any of the two previous videos on screen if you did miss them and I shall see you all in my next Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. Goodbye.